What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is a little bit different video than we're usually making. We're usually just working on badass cars, but today I'm going to explain what happened to me. Um, maybe it'll help you guys in the future or just make you guys more aware of what's going on in the world so you can be careful or more careful about the things that you post. However, will this happen to you? Unless you have people that really dislike you in the community um, because of what you're doing in a positive way, it might not happen to you. So, uh, you guys have probably seen Kevin, my brother's videos. Uh, they did really well. It got a lot of people's attention, which is good because this information needed to get out there and uh, his story needs to be heard because it kind of was uh, some overreach of power, I would say, in the lightest terms. But I have my probation papers right here because your boy is officially, as of Tuesday, on probation and this happened in May and it's all just now getting finalized. So essentially what happened was uh, somebody probably that dislikes my brother uh, and he'll probably get more into it, but went out and uh, made a sworn affidavit that Kevin was you know, street racing and making all these videos and posting them online and so somebody went searching and obviously they thought they were gonna find other things I guess when they searched his house and I got the phone call from when Kevin was in jail and they said, hey, your brother won't be at work today. He's in whatever jail it was. So just so you know, let all of his clients know. So I did, and no lie, I hang up the phone. This is, I think this is in April or May. I think it's in May. I hang up the phone and five minutes later, the cops show up and they confiscate my phone and give me a search warrant. So then my phone was gone for the whole day. And uh, it was the next day, Kevin and I were like, okay, well, we're not getting our stuff back anytime soon. We kept calling and saying, hey, when are we gonna get our stuff back? Because because we book and schedule our clients at the gym via an app on our phone. Plus I have this, Coyote Direct, um, where I work with a lot of customers, you know, like parts and sales on the website. And I talk to customers about builds through my phone. So I need my phone, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, that's how I work. So we ended up going and buying new phones because we weren't going to get our phones back anytime soon is what it seemed like. Um, and when I received the search warrant, I was laughing because the videos that they were getting Kevin and I think about six or seven others in trouble for were actually from a day when I was out of town. I was actually in Dallas racing that car that's up on the lift when it was mine. And so I was like, man, I'm good. I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. You took my phone. You guys are idiots. <laughs> I'm not gonna get in trouble. And so I kind of just, whatever, just kind of blew it off. And uh, you know, then I get, uh, Kevin keeps checking all the time, makes, you know, because then he, <clears throat> he goes to jail and then, you know, they get the search warrant. They got a search warrant for the phones. And then I think a week or two goes by and he's checking the list on the Potter County uh, to see if there's a warrant out for his arrest because it had already happened to him and so he kind of knew what to do. So he's checking all the time and sure enough, he goes and checks and my name is on there as well as about six other people. And I'm like, man, I, I wasn't even there that day. That, this is so ridiculous. But so we go to the Potter County Jail and check ourselves in because if you get pulled over or they see you, you know, they can arrest you and then take you to jail. So what we did was we voluntarily turned ourselves into jail, um, which was the craziest, most eye-opening thing I've ever done. Not ever, but it was very eye-opening. Um, yeah, don't ever want to go back there. It was, I was there for two hours by myself down there with inmates, you know, banging on the window behind me and people getting transferred. And it was a definitely eye-opening experience. So anyways, get done with that. And I'm still in my head like, this is so stupid. I was gone that day. I don't know why they're, they're dragging me along with this. And so sure enough, about a month later, I get a deal for a court date. And uh, so I was like, okay. So I go to court, uh, you know, talk to the judge. And I was, I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna represent myself because at the time I thought they didn't have anything on me because I thought they were talking about the videos that Kevin was getting in trouble for because I was actually out of town that day and I had proof and I brought it with me and they were like, well, we need to gather the evidence. So we'll schedule another court date and we'll bring you back and we'll have all the evidence. We'll show it to you. And I said, okay, well for now I'm going to represent myself, which they highly advise against. And I advise against as well as you know, you should probably always get someone to represent you so that you don't say something you're not supposed to or get trapped into something, whatever. Uh, so anyways, I think another month goes by and I have another court date. So I go to that court date. I say, okay, I'm still representing myself. I want to see the evidence. 
uh, before I decide if I want to hire a lawyer. So they go, they're like, okay, you know, in 10 minutes, you'll go down a level and they're going to have all the evidence. And the sheriff will meet with you, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So I go downstairs, wait for about 10, 20 minutes, and they come out and say their servers are down. <laughs> How convenient. They said the servers are down, they, don't, they can't show any of the evidence, they can't pull it up, and blah, blah, blah. So, once again, wasting my time. So I go home, and I think they schedule another court date. It's like almost a month later again. I mean, this, this is going on all summer. So I go back and tell the judge I'm still representing myself, I want to see the evidence before I decide what I'm going to do. They send me down, I go view the evidence, and I actually sit in this little, I don't know, four by four cubicle with a computer from the 1990s and a little disk drive and literally uh, they had it all in a folder. You could see, I actually went into Kevin's folder and looked at all the videos they had on him and uh, I click on one video, it's like, welcome back to the channel. And I'm like, okay, turn the volume down. Uh, so then I go into my folder because I was still at this time under the assumption in my head, I'm like, oh, I wasn't there that day. I'm gonna be golden. So. I open my folder and there's some videos from my YouTube right on there and the specific one I'm going to post again in this video, I post the beginning, post it here now. Um, the specific one that I got in trouble for is actually a draggy video. It was one that they had or they thought they had the most evidence um, because it's a, you know, when you set your draggy up it shows the mile an hour. It didn't, I think I had like the 60 to 130 and all the times unchecked or something but I had the mile per hour showing in the bottom left hand corner. And then on the highway, you can actually see visibly the street exit or the exit signs for what roads they are in Amarillo, Texas. So in my head, I'm like, well, they could prove the mile an hour probably and they could prove where I'm at. The only thing they probably couldn't prove was they couldn't see me in the video was what I was thinking. Um, then they, they had a few other videos, but that was the specific one when I was doing some draggy hits, uh, testing out a boost controller wired up for my buddy Johnny before I had the shop and everything. And uh, so yeah, so that was the video. Um, and it wasn't street racing, it was actually reckless driving. So it was a class, I don't even remember which class of misdemeanor, but <clears throat> yeah, I don't even remember. It was a misdemeanor, well, let's see. Uh, I don't know, it doesn't say, it just says reckless drive, May 3rd, 2021. But anyways, so I had a class A or class B misdemeanor, whichever the lesser one is, uh, for reckless driving. And so I go and hire a lawyer, spend $5,000, mind you. Um, plus I had to spend the money on the bail bondsman, however much that was, I don't know, 500 bucks or whatever it was. So we're above $5,000 now. And I was thinking we're probably going to fight it because I'm like, it's a draggy video. Like, it's still an app. You know, you could probably... You know, they're very accurate, but maybe you could say that it's game simulated. I don't know, but you actually couldn't see my face in the video. But, um, so that took another, like, I think two months before my lawyer got back to me and she just said, it's not worth it. We're going to take a pretrial diversion. So you could do that is what I would recommend. Um, and then there's pretty much two options. You can go to jail for 15 days <laughs> or you can pay a... I don't know, $250 fine to the court and be on probation for six months and then pay probation fees, which are $60 a month for uh, six months. My probation is only for six months. So in my head, I'm like, okay, 15 days of jail. That's 15 days not making money. I think I'm gonna take the fee and the probation because then the misdemeanor will also be off my record, which I work for myself and I work for Kevin, so I don't know if it's a big deal in the long run, but it's never good to have those things on your record, I feel like. So, um, yeah, 15 days in jail just didn't sound too appetizing compared to just paying a couple hundred bucks and being done with the stupid thing. So, uh, I paid my $250 fine. I went to my pre-trial diversion meeting or whatever. The judge didn't even show up, which is awesome. I don't know if he asked to, but it was awesome. And uh, I signed my paperwork, and now I'm on probation starting on Tuesday. So I had to go meet uh, somebody downtown, pay 360 bucks for the probation period, because I just figured I'd pay it all up front. And then uh, I meet with my actual probation officer on Tuesday, but it was the craziest thing. Like I had to describe all my tattoos and what they mean, and you know, if I've ever done this or done that or I had to give my vehicles license all the vehicles license plates numbers 
you know, so that they can check on you. They have to have your address, obviously. Um, but from what I've heard, according to the lady I spoke with, it probably won't be that hard of a probation because it is for reckless driving. So I may have to take a couple drug tests, which obviously I'll pass. Um, but it says avoid bars, no alcohol, have a curfew, no firearms, and no THC. So can't have firearms on you or in the house, which is really weird. Um, I guess you can't protect yourself even, you know, because I guess I'm officially a criminal for the next six months. So I just wanted to explain the facts to you guys. So I did get pulled over, or I, think, I didn't get pulled over. I got in trouble for a video I posted here on YouTube uh, two years ago, May of 21, it's almost two years ago, doing draggy hits. I didn't even show myself during the section that they had pulled, but doing a draggy hit. So will you get in trouble for doing draggy hits? I think it's highly unlikely, um, unless someone really hates you and wants to go looking through all your videos. So um, if you want to, I guess, maybe help yourself a little, probably like blur out where they can see. Um, just saying you're in Mexico doesn't really do anything, um, but them being able to see like the mile marker you're at, the street exits you're at, the mile per hour, that's some evidence right there. Now, I'm not saying you probably can't go fight it because I feel like you probably could with a good lawyer and get away with it, but all the money I've spent is not worth it. Like I think I'm close to six grand or a little over six grand with the bail bondsman, the lawyer fee, the probation, the pretrial diversion fee, all for a stupid draggy video. Now, mind you, I don't do stuff on the street anymore. I don't street race, haven't street raced in years. Um, I wasn't even street racing in the video. I was just making a draggy hit because I was testing out the boost control and I thought it'd be a cool video for you guys to see, which people liked it, but it came back and bit me in the ass. All I'm saying is just be careful out there because people are watching your stuff, whether you think they are or not, and be careful because there is somebody out there who hates you. There's probably somebody watching this video that doesn't like me and is probably glad that it happened, but no one got hurt or injured when I was doing my stuff and I'm glad about that, but it does suck that you know you can't even go out and do fun stuff because people just ruin it. So all I want to do is make one quick video, give you guys all the facts, what actually happened. Um, be careful out there because people are watching your stuff. And I think Kevin's probably going to do a few more videos more in depth talking like what actually went on. But I just want to give you guys my facts. And mine was a little bit different than his. So I wanted to tell you what I got in trouble for and my probation. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys want to see some badass builds, we got plenty going on back here. See you guys on the next one.